Hello and welcome to another episode of Food Tech 101. Now today in this particular episode, carrying on with our super successful Rice Krispies theme or series, in the very last video I did, we did some taste comparisons comparing uh, homemade Rice Krispies using uh, white rice and wholemeal rice against Rice Krispies and also puff rice to see what the difference was and see to see how one fared against the other. And I think the homemade product fared extremely well. In this video, due to popular demand, uh, so many people in the comments have said, can you make cocoa pops? I said, yeah, we know how to do that. So we're gonna make cocoa pops completely from scratch with natural ingredients and starting with wholemeal rice. Let's go. For this recipe, you will need five tablespoons of coconut oil, six tablespoons of maple syrup, three tablespoons of brown sugar, six tablespoons of cocoa powder, to start off, we need to make sure that our salt is at the right temperature. To do that, simply throw in a few grains of rice and within a few seconds, they should pop up. Once we know our salt is up to the correct temperature, then we just put in the portion of rice that we need for our first batch. I'm measuring this out and for the amount of salt I have, I'm going for a quarter of a cup at a time. Just throw the rice in, give it a quick stir and within a few seconds, it should pop up scoop it out and repeat. And here we go. From our one cup of rice, we produced about five, almost six cups of Rice Krispies dark ones you can always pick out ones that are, that are a little bit dark but really that's a massive return 500% return so from one cup of rice we get up about 600% we get about six cups of rice krispies so that's the first part done next part we've got to make our chocolate sauce if you like that's going to cover our rice krispies I'm going to overheat right down and first thing that goes in is our coconut fat all these on a relatively low heat but even so so that's just melting off. Into that, I'm going to add, once it's fully melted, maple syrup. And then into that, I'm going to add some brown sugar. I'm not making a toffee, so all you only want them to sort of dissolve into each other. Give that a few minutes on a low heat. And into that, I'm going to add cocoa powder. And this, in essence, is what we're going to use to coat our Rice Krispies, really quite simple. So here is our chocolate sauce. And now, into that, we're gonna mix our Rice Krispies. And to finish them off, I'm just going to put them on a, on a baking tray. I'm going to bake them in the oven just for a few minutes to just sort of fully dry them off. What's crazy is just look how much we've got. This is the equivalent to about two boxes of cocoa pops, and it's completely natural. We've seen all the ingredients we put into it. You can vary the amount of sugar if you wish to put less or put a bit more all natural ingredients wholemeal whole grain rice and look how much we've got look how much product we've got from just literally one cup of rice all right pop this in the oven let them dry out a little bit and then i think we're ready for a taste test so here we have the product now We've got the Morrison's version, which looked kind of more milky, chocolatey brown. We've had the Fruit at 101 version, 
which looks like dark chocolate. And then we have the Kellogg's version, which is actually somewhere in between. So for the first one, just on looks alone, I would probably say, and it is very subjective, I like the look of the Morrison's one, they look kind of milk chocolatey. The Food Tech 101 version, they look, uh, there's, there's a lot more variation. They're not as homogenous, they're not as evenly coated as the other two. So I'm gonna put that in first place. I'm gonna put that in, in third place. And there's somewhere in between the two, so I'll make that in second place. So let's go six points, four points, two points. It's not looking good for my product so far. So the first round of points have gone. Let's just put our points on our list. So we've got a six, a four, and a two. Now looks are very subjective, and if I was going to weight the value of them, how something looks is important because it encourages us to eat, but not the most important thing. Nevertheless, it's one of our categories. Next up, we've got aroma, what it smells like. So let me smell the first one. It's gonna be the Morrison's version. It smells chocolatey. Not, not particularly strong. Smell this one. This one's much stronger. You're getting a much stronger smell of chocolate. It's, it's much more, there's much more to it. The, the, the smell, the aroma is a bit more complex. You're getting the chocolate coming through, a little hint of the coconut because it was cooked in, we did use coconut oil. You can even smell a little bit of the sweetness from the maple syrup we use. So the smell, the aroma is, if you like, more complex. So I would say this one's in a, in a lead at the moment. Let's just try the Kellogg's. No, there's virtually no, no room of that at all. So there's virtually nothing coming off that at all. So I'm gonna go, oh, we'll be getting some back. So we're gonna go Food Tech 101, that's gonna get six points. Morrison's gonna get four. The Kellogg's own version, that's gonna get just two. Okay, fight on. So now it's gonna be texture. So I'm gonna, just gonna try some before we add the, add the milk, just kind of check the texture a little bit. So I'm gonna try some here. Mm. Very, very light. Easy to crunch, a bit like the, like the Aunt Rice Krispies themselves. The tech hasn't changed that much. Let's try some of these ones here. Mm. Much, much crunchier. Taste, I'm going to taste. Feels a bit more substantial to chew, but not in a, it's not in a hard way to do that. Just feels a, like it's got a bit more bite to it. So I think that gives me the gives a little bit of an edge on the Morrison's version. Let's try Kellogg's. That's equally as light as the first one. So let's just put them both in second place because these two taste uh, texture-wise exactly the same. But I think uh, leading a little bit is the homemade Fruit Up 101 version. So we're going to go Fruit Up 101 gets six. The other two I'm going to give four each because they taste. Texture-wise, is almost exactly the same. Now, this is the part that has, that is the most significant. That is what they actually taste like. So, I'll put a bit of milk in the first one. This is some um, almond milk I made, very easy. So I've got some almond milk in this one. So let's give the first one a taste. This is the Morrison's version. Nice to see it turns the milk a bit chocolatey brown, which is a nice touch. Let's focus on the taste for now. Not a very distinct flavour, to be honest with you. Not even that chocolatey, to be fair. It turned the milk brown, but it's not actually that chocolatey. It's, it's kind of sweetish, a little hint of chocolate. You got your eyes closed. But I know it was chocolate if my eyes are closed, possibly. So not a particularly chocolatey flavor coming through there, which is surprising. So I'll, I'll rank them, taste them all first, but that, that's not ranking very high taste-wise so far. Let's try Food Tech 101 version. Okay. Again, it too is turning the milk brown, not quite as brown as the first ones. Let's see what it tastes like. Okay. Okay. 
There's a lot more going on there. It's amazing. There's a lot more going on there. There's so many more flavors and things I can taste within that. I am tasting a little touch of coconut. So if you're not a fan of coconut, maybe you might want to use an alternative fat. But I am tasting a little, little taste of coconut, which I actually like. We're getting a little back, back, back taste of coconut. As I chew, I can get the flavor from the individual rice itself. So the brown rice I'm using actually has a flavor, which is adding to it. So my brain's taking in, it's like it's taking in more taste information. And then towards the end of the chew, the flavor of the chocolate comes through more. So this definitely is um, much more full of flavor and you can taste the chocolate. There's a lot more going on in that. So I'm going to rank this higher than the first one. And let's give um, Kellogg's a chance to see if they can they can pull something out of the bag here. Okay, here we go. This is the Kellogg's version, the original. All right, here we go. Okay. A bit sweeter than the Morrison's equivalent. A bit more chocolatey as well. Similarly chocolatey to the homemade version, but still not as much going on interest-wise. But do you want more going on? It's on, the homemade version is undeniably a more interesting taste. But is it? It's interesting, but is it nicer? That's a, it's a quite. It's a toss-up between these two. Let me taste it again. Mm. Not quite sure about that one. I'm gonna call it one a tie because these are more interesting tasting. A lot more going on. But because there's a lot more going on, that might polarise some people's opinions if they eat it and think, well, it's this one's blander, so it'll appeal to more people. Um, do I like it more? I'm not even sure. I like them both. I kind of veer towards the interest version of that, but then it's so unique that I don't think I could eat quite as much of this one as I could of that one, because it's like, this one's easier to eat, it's blander. This one... There's more taste information going into my brain. So, I still have to call it one, so I'm gonna call it one draw. So this one's def the first, the Morrison's are definitely very bland, so that can't win. So I'm gonna give, um, mm, it's kinda hard one. I'm gonna give Futek 101 a six for that. I'm gonna give Kellogg's also a six, and I'm gonna give Morrison's the four. I'll have one last quick taste tester to confirm. It must go nice and chocolatey. Very, very close call. I think that the Kellogg's equivalent will appeal to more people because the taste isn't quite as unique. Whereas the homemade ones, the taste is very unique. And I think maybe because, because it's so unique, it might be a little bit more polarizing. But I'm gonna have to call it on a tie. But the, both of these things have more taste and character than the first ones, the Morrison's equivalent, which actually very, very bland, and you can you had your eyes closed, you probably couldn't even tell it was chocolate. Well, there we go. All right, we have ourselves a winner. So let's go in reverse order. So in reverse order, we have ourselves a two-way tie. In joint second place, we have Morrison's and Kellogg's versions with 18, but the winner of this particular test with 20 points is the Fruitech 101 version. Oh, my version wins. Ah. You can shout bias. Ah, you can shout bias. I mean, I try my best to be as fair as possible with these things. Um, but there you go. So we've made a homemade cocoa pops, which, without doubt, you'd have to at least concede it was healthier. Made from whole grain rice, actual rice. We've seen the ingredients that have gone into it. We could vary that as well. I could reduce the amount of coconut, which would take away some of that coconut taste. Um, I could probably reduce down some of the chocolate if you wished. Um, could you reach down some of the sugar? I mean, you, you, you can play around any of those combination variations, but nevertheless, we've ended up with a product that has stood up well against the shop bought equivalents. And economically speaking, I think we've done it at a pretty decent price. Just to remind you that all this was made from about this much actual rice, and it is whole grain. Thanks for joining me on my taste test and my uh, homemade Cocoa Pops experience. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Fruit at 101 is also on TikTok, so you can check us out there. And we're also on Instagram. Once again, thanks for watching. 
As always, my name is Mr. Lyburn, but you can call me Sir. I think I'll finish these actually. Mmm. Bunchy. I hate wasting nothing, it's all of them. <laughs>